morning, Chris Petrie here. Welcome. Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, we're just out here. It's New Jersey in the United States. I'm in the backyard here, and uh, we're just uh, enjoying a little bit of snow here. Um, we just had some snow uh, this uh, last couple of days, and so I decided to come out and just do a little bit of sketching, and uh, I brought my sketchbook with me, and uh, this is actually a painting I did out in Pennsylvania. And if you can see that, that is really... Um, I had a lot of fun. It was a snowy day out in Pennsylvania and um, I was on vacation and I just was looking out the uh, balcony of our hotel and I did a nice uh, uh, tree here with a, a distant uh, barn and some uh, really uh, cool uh, uh, trees and bushes in the distance and snow on the roof and snow on the ground and so forth. So I encourage everybody, if you can once in a while, uh, do a little plein air work. Um, I do most of my work in the studio. But once in a while, it's fun to go out and just uh, try a little bit of plein air painting and do bring a sketchbook with you. And I find this is really good. A lot of artists do this. Uh, watercolor artists, they bring their sketchbook with them, a small paint set, a little water bucket, a pencil, and uh, just go for it and ha have some fun and get down some ideas. And it's not so much to create a beautiful painting, although you can do that too. You can bring out a full easel and everything and set up and and create a, a wonderful uh, you know full uh, size painting if you want to finish painting but most uh, watercolor artists probably do the sketchbook idea when they go out and do plain air because a lot of times you know it's there's so many things changing with the weather and other issues and so a lot of times we have to pick up and uh, uh, you know go because it's gonna rain or it's getting too windy or it's uh, too hot and and so forth so in any case hey let's go back in the studio let's create a painting let's have some fun hey if you haven't subscribed please subscribe hit the subscribe button below um, we're gonna actually uh, we get together every weekend once a week and we create a painting there it's for all uh, intermediate beginners and professional artists alike anyone that wants to come along and paint once a week we get together we do something and then as well of course we have our 300 or more paintings in our um, library here on YouTube on our channel where you can um, enjoy going back and seeing all the different ideas and if, especially if you're a new artist you know you're gonna get a lot of information from the uh, 300 videos that we have on this channel so I wish everybody happy painting have a great time and remember knowledge is power the more knowledge you can gather when you're uh, doing your watercolor paintings you're gonna make uh, better paintings and be happier it'll encourage you to keep going and uh, creating more paintings alright we'll see you in the studio all right here we are we're in the studio now we're gonna do some uh, ideas on plein air sketching and coming back to this studio so like we were just uh, speaking about when we're out in plain air uh, outdoors and we're going to paint a little bit. A lot of times, most watercolor artists, again, um, especially professional uh, watercolor artists, a lot of times will bring their sketchbook just like this here. Um, and they'll bring it out to the on location and take some notes and do some sketching. Some, you know, light uh, painting and quick uh, ideas on their sketchbooks. And then they bring them back into the studio. And then they can develop ideas from there and they take photographs as well. So we can take photographs when we're out, uh, out and about and we're, um, you know, in our everyday lives, we can take photos for ideas when we're, uh, you know, for our paintings and so forth. And so this is a fun little uh, painting I did when I was on vacation out in Pennsylvania uh, in the United States. And um, it was just, um, you know, a quick uh, idea of a, a barn in the distance. And um, it was, uh, it had just snowed overnight. So... Um, the ground was covered with snow, the, the barn had, the uh, roof was covered with snow, and I was on a balcony of our hotel, so there was a tree right in front of the balcony here, which was really interesting. It kind of gives some three-dimensional uh, feel to the, to the painting and to the composition. And so what I decided to do is um, come back here, we're in the studio, and then I used some some acetate, some uh, heavy gauge plastic. Um, Duralar makes this. Uh, D-U-R-A-L-A-R, Duralar. There's a lot of other companies that make uh, acetate plastic. You can purchase it. It's great. Um, I, I cut a small piece the size of the sketchbook and then I painted, I put it on the paper like so. So I put it on my paper and I I took my brush, my watercolor brush, and I made a little mix on the palette. And then I just uh, quickly did a an idea of like a railing, 
so a balcony railing here and I noticed that uh, instead of doing it in the sketchbook I have the option of adding it to my sketchbook and putting in a railing or I can leave it out it doesn't matter really but if we're, we're now going to do another painting and we're going to recreate this painting as a small composition here and I can look at this and say does it look better with a railing or does it not so how do you feel about that do you like this uh, railing here or does it look better without it so that's your decision as an artist you, you can make you can create ideas on some plastic and put it over the top of your paintings and decide if you want to add it in or not so instead of committing and going right in and painting it you can actually take a look and say all right how is that going to look is that going to look a little better um, maybe it doesn't um, look as good as I thought in my imagination so um, these are things you can do in the studio and uh, so that's what we're gonna do here we're gonna paint another one here just a quick sketch of this uh, scene we'll, we'll kind of minimize it though um, to save on time and we'll put in this railing because I, I like the railing idea I just ran out of time when I was on vacation and uh, didn't put in the railing but there was a railing on the balcony of the uh, hotel and I think it it looks better with the railing because it, it gives it another dimension it almost it almost explains that we're behind a railing here and we're looking down on the scene whereas here I don't get that feeling I sort of get a little confused as to like where we are in the picture so this just further that railing idea here even if it's just a little rough end of a railing explains the idea of we're sort of like behind a, a railing or a fence of some sort perhaps quite a bit further away from the scene of the barn and the uh, distant fields here and the distant um, hills and in, in the uh, furthest distance in the painting here so let's uh, we'll start here and I what I thought I would do is I'm gonna set this up across from me so I'm and uh, I'll start off just making a border so this way we kind of know Okay, now we'll I'll start off with the uh, tree right here in front. Okay, so that's the uh, tree in front, and then I'm going to try to see where this is. This is about here. And I'm contour drawing, kind of roughing out the idea here. And I think I can These are always challenging, these uh barns and houses, the, the roofs and the to try to get the um, the right angles but I, I think that's okay things always look better once we start painting too, I notice that always with drawing and uh, so forth when we draw and sketch things out it always looks it always looks better once we start painting and uh, we can adjust sometimes a little bit with our with our brush uh, and our paint for angles and things to make things look a little bit better as we go sometimes when we're pencil sketching it just there's not much around our pencil sketching to give everything like a full um, understanding of angles and things so that's where if we get it pretty close to accurate with our pencil we're okay
with our pencil drawing. And then here I'll make sure I capture the um, back of the some ground here. There's some different um, we want to capture some of the lines along the, the grounds here by this barn and there's another section back here. And these lines are good. They they add to the feeling of things going off into the distance and then I noticed that there was another hill that went over here. And we're just going to rough in some ideas. We're just doing a sketch here. So we're just pretending this is our sketchbook and we're out on location and we're getting in some ideas. And there's some fence posts I'll put in. These are uh, key, these uh, fence posts and things, to try to keep them getting larger as they come closer to us in the picture, the fence posts. So they're really small and very, very minimal in the distance. And then as they get closer, these fence posts, we make them a little larger. And you can kind of work some ideas out too if you want on like a scrap paper. If you're doing a sketch, uh, if you're doing something in your sketchbook, you, know, you can also take a a um, you can take a piece of like just printer paper, regular um, drawing paper, printer paper, and sort of see how the how you can adjust your your fence posts as you go, and if they need to be smaller closer by you can just trim them down a little bit with a, or an eraser just to kind of get the feel of things they would get you know wider far apart as they get further in the distance the fence posts get closer together so you can always work stuff out first on paper and then uh, it makes it a little easier Okay, so now we'll we'll start off. We'll do the barn. I'll mix a little bit of uh, cadmium red, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of lizard and crimson. A little bit of burnt umber there. Maybe a little bit of French ultramarine blue. And again, we use that tube paint straight straight out of the palette. And we change a little bit of the color. Maybe a little bit of uh, gold. We'll use a little um, yellow ochre there too. It was pretty, 
pretty bright out with all the snow, so there wasn't a lot of shadows. It was sort of overcast that day, so that's not a lot of shadow ideas here. And then we can use our greens, sap green, olive green, a little burr umber, a little French ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and then we just start blocking in some of the trees in the background here. And a little splashing just to loosen up the feel here a little bit. And uh, there's some uh, distant trees here. We can use the same color with in the that we were using for the barn for some of the distant uh, trees here. And it's good to sometimes to get that kind of the flick upwards for the for the the bushes and trees and things. And now I want to make sure I get that there's some snow behind these bushes and trees here so I want to get that and it's a little lighter so I'm going to change the change the colors a little bit here I'll go with a little lighter maybe a little cerulean blue and uh, yellow ochre A little more water, less uh, paint. So this would be the another field going back behind. And if it's in the distance, it's a little cooler. So I'm going to make sure I get that cerulean blue. And then we can also do more once this dries a little bit. This uh, first wash as we're we're trying to do this pretty much all a prima, you know, just all at one time. But we can also go back in. I, I notice I'm going to want to do a little more work into this area back here, and so we're just going to get the idea of working this out here, and then getting those. Getting those fields in with that white line going across, that's the snow in the field there. So we have the first bushes and a little bit of trees and then that line back here for the next field going back. That's really important. It gives you that feeling of stepping back and having some nice, uh, you know, uh, dimensionality to the painting. And 
and then we can go of course with a larger brush and I remember I did this when I did the actual painting and then once we get back in this section here quite a bit more water in the wash and these are sort of the hills in the back with some more trees and And then this is yet another field all the way up. It's a hill going up. So if you can imagine it's going back and then there's like a, a somewhat of a sloping hill going up behind here. So that's even more um, cooler in the distance here. We'll get some more of that cerulean blue in there. And uh, French ultramarine blue and um, sap green just to keep it cooler over here. And again, you can go in on top of this. Once this dries, you can use like a needle point brush, a fine point brush, um, a fine point brush like this, a needle point brush, and you can do fine twigs and, and sticks and trees and things like that. You can also use a needle point brush for the um, branches on this tree as well as the fence posts. And we'll we'll keep we'll keep going here. We're gonna try to get in this. Uh, tree here which I mixed up with a lot of different colors just to give it lots of variety so French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, yellow ochre and of course it's it's very uh, close this is right in front of our balcony so we're make some just some changes Put some color, some interesting color here just to make it look uh, exciting. Don't feel you're always locked into following your drawing exactly. If, you, if you're in the moment and you just feel like you want to do a couple scrubby lines for some things on your tree here, let's say, just go for it. Don't worry about it. The pencil lines look good anyway when you leave them on the painting, I think. And So there's no worries there. And Again, we can go back in and do some uh, more work with the uh, needle point brush to get some more finer details. Again, this is just the idea of working out, doing um, maybe some work uh, out, outdoors where you're just doing some quick ideas. If you're at a location, you, you, you can't stay there too long. Uh, you might have to um, be traveling or and you're just trying to get in a quick painting or whatever. And You know, you get down some ideas like this and then it's good. A couple photographs that you can bring back home to the studio and then you have a really good, uh, a good idea of... Um, of how to put together a, like a, a more finished painting if you want and uh, so we'll uh, do a little more there just to okay now I'm going to draw in that uh, railing I thought we had it about about here and we could draw right over our painting maybe a, a rail underneath it so maybe this is wood here and then this is some metal underneath that and then we have some some spindles for the um, Okay, and then here we can, uh, for our railing, we can we 
can just go across. We load up our brush with lots of paint and water, and right across we go. And maybe we could take some blue underneath here a little bit. Maybe some cad red too, make it exciting. Maybe some uh, yellow, cadmium yellow. And we can zip in those uh, spindles here. And again, if we're doing a sketch, we're not going to be, you know, getting too worried about things, we're just having fun and then we can add in some uh, more color to the uh, spindles once we kind of get them painted in. And then we'll go with a, a really rich dark for underneath the um, so that would be French Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, and Burn Umber to get a nice dark. Lots of ultramarine, French Ultramarine Blue. And then we just go right across like that. Okay, so we have our balcony here. We have a nice uh, balcony, maybe we're sitting in a chair having a cup of coffee, we're looking out at this nice field, we're relaxed, we're on vacation, and we're having a good time, and we're just doing a nice little sketch, and this is how we do it, with, you know, just uh, working through the painting. Um, you can add in some more paint, uh, some additional washes if you... We'll do some fence posts. We'll take our needlepoint brush and we'll get some water mixed in with that. We'll do some more burnt umber, French ultramarine, blizzard and crimson. We'll make it lighter, um, tonal value lighter in the distant ones here. And of course, a, a few more in the distance here. Uh, there, there'll be more more fence posts in the distance, and as they get closer, they they get further apart in distance. The fence posts to give it that look of um, and we could have a little bit of a little indication of some uh, wire, barbed wire, or something here, and and that looks pretty good. I, I think that's the basic idea of what we're doing here. This has been fun. I hope you come back and do some more painting here. We're going to expand upon our ideas here with doing some sketchbook work. Um, uh, springtime is coming up. We're going to go to the, um, maybe down the shore. I have a, um, I have a, a, in an hour, uh, an hour drive from here, we have some beautiful boat yards and some ocean, things like that. So I'm going to try to get out. We'll do some on location painting actually. Um, I'm going to try to expand out and do a little more interesting things like that, doing some outdoor stuff and uh, recording outdoors and then we'll bring the our sketchbook back to the studio and we'll, we'll work out some more ideas just like this so essentially we just started out with our painting that we did in the in the actual on vacation our sketchbook painting and then we brought it back to the studio and we added some things to it and um, you know we used our uh, acetate uh, to come up with the idea of a railing looking better in the painting so and it does it looks more more realistic that we're really sitting in a balcony and having some coffee on vacation and looking out 
Um, this was leaving things a little more un, unfinished uh, or uh, confusing us as to where we are and why there's this, you know, large tree here. We don't now we know it's like yeah, it would be right in front of the alongside the building, the nice large tree, and then a a, a railing and a balcony, and makes a lot more sense. So we work that out, and here we have a nice uh, finished uh, sketchbook painting, and uh, we're gonna um, come back next uh, next week and have some more fun in the studio. Bye for now, everyone. Happy painting, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.